Welcome back, folks, to the Mail Right Show. This is episode 213. It's going to be an internal discussion between me and Robert. We have got some great guests in, the, in October. We're going to have some great interviews, but we've got a great subject as well. We're going to be talking about the difference between a direct, um, direct traffic kind of website and organic traffic to your website and the different types of websites that you can purchase as a real estate agent. I think it causes a lot of confusion. Robert tells me he's getting a lot of inquiries and that's a major question that's asked, asked of him and I can totally understand. Now, Robert, would you like to introduce yourself to the new listeners and viewers? I would love to. So, uh, hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Robert Newman. I'm the founder of Inbound REM. Uh, it's a blog. It was originally a blog, and now we have a small host of technology products that we've also uh, launched. All of the things that I do and that I talk about are aimed at educating you on how to get a better ROI, how to own your own marketing destiny, and you can learn all that stuff on my website here on the podcast with, uh, with Jonathan as part of the MailRite podcast. Um, and I'm excited to dig into these topics today. Yeah, and I'm the founder of MailRite. We're a platform that gets you quality leads with, an, with a software solution combined with the power of Facebook. And don't deceive yourself. Facebook is still one of the major ways of getting direct traffic to your website, which is one of the things we're probably going to be discussing during this show. So, Robert, um, when we were having our pre-show chat, um, before we go live, you're saying you've had a few inquiries over the past couple of weeks, and there seems to be a lot of confusion about the different type of websites and website solutions out there. So, would you like to take over and give the listeners and viewers an outline of, of where some of the key areas or around this confusion occurs? I would love to. So, so today, and thank you, Jonathan, for letting me run with this. I really appreciate it. Uh, today, we're going to talk about definitions. And the reason this comes up is because a lot of people don't understand the marketing language that companies use when they're describing their products, which means that ultimately, you don't even understand that websites fall into different categories or that services fall into different categories. And so I want to try to untangle a little bit of that confusion and make it a little bit simpler for everybody to understand. So first of all, there's some language that's used around direct marketing. All right. What is direct marketing? What is the difference between that and other marketing that you can buy as a real estate agent? Well, direct marketing implies that you are spending money or advertising directly to your marketplace. That's why it's called direct marketing. So direct marketing in real estate would be Zillow, like buying Zillow advertising, Trulia advertising, uh, buying realtor.com. These are direct to market leads that you can purchase because you're going directly to where the audience is that's searching for properties on these various platforms. You're spending money and in theory, you're putting up an advertisement in front of these. And then you drive, in those cases, you actually just get a lead. Other direct marketing solutions drive you to a website. So you're going to another website, such as Google or Facebook, and you're driving traffic to your website or a website that you may control or you may be leasing from somebody. The thing that frustrates me about almost all direct marketing solutions is that they have combined another package of services together and they identify themselves as one big service. So they've a lot of good direct marketing solutions have also created a CRM pipeline follow-up product, like a, a whole system, like a front to back end system. And then they use this very confusing language to describe it. They also make you make a deal with the devil in order to buy it in the sense that, you will spend a reasonably large amount of money setting up one of these systems. You don't own it. They own everything, including your data. Not that they do anything with it. I'm not saying that these companies are nefarious, but they actually own the data even. They're just letting you use it. So you go ahead and you buy the system and all you're doing is leasing their system 
and they control everything from top to bottom. And so should you ever have any like dissatisfaction, you've got very little recourse. And if they buy, sell themselves or anything happens with these companies, uh, you've got no recourse. doesn't matter if you're They have a data break in and they, all your leads get stolen. Guess what? You signed away the rights to them a long time ago. You know, there's nothing that you, that, that you can do. But let's stick with language and Jonathan is being a love and, and not actually correcting me or, or getting on my... No, it's just there. Um, I'm, that last bit, I was a little, you know, there was a kind of tinge of you, you it wasn't exactly what you were saying. It was in your tone, your, in your tone obviously, because I know, know you now quite well to some extent. So in your tone, you, you were kind of saying that them you know if they don't really spell it out to you that is a problem and i think what you're suggesting is a lot of agents don't understand that if they stop paying for a particular crm service that it goes away the next the next two days or the next week right correct um but on the other hand you know I think what you're really saying is they don't really understand the principles of SAS, do they? No, they don't. And right. SAS is a software as a service, which is what that means. Because today's show is about definition, so we might as well uh, cover that one. Um, so software as a service is where you're paying for something, and it's literally, it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's like, okay, so I built this really cool thing. You're going to give me $100 a month to use my cool thing. But it's my thing. It's my toy. Well, are you saying then, you know, I'm a little bit surprised that you feel that because, you know, if you if you have Nets, Net, Net, Netsvic, you now you're buying your films from them, you're, you know, if you cancel your subscription to them, you no longer get your films, do you? Right. Netflix. Cor correct. And I don't feel that way about, like, I use a ton of SAAS services in my life. The, the frustration for me is specifically real estate SAAS services that uh, are related to lead generation. And more importantly, I think my frustration comes down to, or, or actually it's not frustration, it's just, it, it's, listen, I've taken a stance I've decided to be to evangelize a certain idea inside the real estate industry, which is you should own your own real estate destination. It should be hyper local. You should create a brand and you should stop relying on all these big companies to help market you because every single one of them is walking away with the with the prize all of them truly a zillow well my my position with mailwright is that we offer a website with either without or with idx integration right sure you um we get the idx integration from idx broker which is a leading wordpress and i think it's the service that you use for your own bestoke website solutions that you offer for your client Correct. We we offer a more basic website solution. It's not bespoke. I designed or implemented in a. It's a more basic solution, a much more basic solution. Um, but our deal is the lead, You know, if you spend time and money on the website, I I put in content, unique content on that website, and you get fed up with Mailwright we will transfer that website to another hosting provider free of charge. So you're not in, but our, we kept our services, our, um, our app, apps, our application side on a separate platform. Okay. So when you stop buying, you stop paying for Mailrite. Yes. You, you no longer will be, have access to the landing pages, um, to the social media calendar, the five main key applications that in in built into Mailrite, you won't have access to that, but you will have access to your website and any content 
that you've built on that website and or if you've built local SEO um, or links to that website, you won't you won't lose that if you decide to walk away from mail right. So I feel that's a very fair solution. Uh, I don't, I don't disagree. I mean, we've had, we've had a lot of conversations about this. And honestly, I think another reason that, that I evangelize inside the real estate space specifically is that most agents like having conversations that are, that are pretty basic about technology oftentimes miss the mark because real estate agents. Well, it will because the, what I've just said, what you're pointing out, what I've just said, which you clearly understand if we had, and I'm not being disparaging because we're in, in this bubble, aren't we? Both of us are in this bubble. Yeah. But if you have that discussion with the average agent, if I had that discussion with the average agent, they would probably say, they would start nodding their head, but fundamentally they probably haven't understood much of what I've just said. I, I would agree. Uh, I would agree with it. I would agree with that a hundred percent. Um, what do you think is the main area of confusions? Well, number one, you know, you're going to move a site from one place to the next. That's not an easy process, no matter even when you're, when you're experienced, even when you know what the hell you're doing. You take a domain name, you move it from one place to the next. And if you don't bother to move the entire URL structure, like all of the pages from one place to the next, all you really do is keep the, like, the URL authority, the domain authority. <laughs> Well, you've probably lost a lot of people already by saying that, but um, we need to clarify that in a minute. But when it comes to MailRite, this is what we suggest. When we set up this, the website, it's set up on a, a subdomain, and then we, we then talk to the client and we suggest that they purchase a domain, right? And we suggest they purchase it through GoDaddy or they set up a GoDaddy account, give us the login details, and we'll buy the domain for them through their GoDaddy account. But they own, and then we do, a, then we, um, do what is called a, a, a submask, where we use that domain for the public. The public sees the domain, but the agent owns the domain, right? right. If they ever get fed up with the mail right um, system, um, we'll move it to another hosting provider for them. And then we'll point where that GoDaddy is pointing to, where it sends that domain to the website. We can change it in about five minutes and it will point somewhere else and they're up and running again. Um, so we're getting a little off topic. Yeah, we are. I'm sorry. We've probably lost a lot of our audience, haven't we, Robert? I want to get back on topic. Yeah, I yeah. want to leave that alone and uh, move back into the topics that we were talking about, which is basic definitions today, ladies and yeah. gentlemen, not advanced definitions. That's not what I, I personally intended to, to want to talk about. So the basic definitions, so I wanted to quickly go over, so you have these direct marketing platforms in real estate marketing specifically. I'm going to give you a long list. And they all basically do the same thing. And, and maybe some of the things that they do have to be explained at the, at the tail end of it. But uh, you have Realtor.com, Zillow, and Trulia. And you buy leads from those services. Okay, that's, it's an easy definition. They're very large search websites. And somewhere in the search process, somebody registers with the website, not understanding that they're going to get in touch with you, the person who is advertising or in, in some cases like Trulia, maybe they do understand that. But regardless, it is, um, um, uh, wow, uh, I, I, one of my clients uh, left me always, give me a second here. One of my clients actually is logged on to the show and talking to us. I can't believe it first. <laughs> Well, keep, keep your definitions going in the meantime. Right. So, um, so, there, so, there's, so there's those three types of companies, right? Which is basically buying a lead. And sometimes they, the people are buying you and sometimes they're not. Because with Trulia, you get a little picture of yourself with all of your reviews associated with it and your phone number. And when they register, they fully expect that they're registering with you. So Trulia is the best of these services in terms of 
how you as the advertiser are being displayed. Then you have other direct marketing platforms, and this is the big list, the huge list. And you have Boomtown, uh, Easy Agent Pro, Sierra Interactive, Luxury Presence, Boston Logic, and the list honestly goes on. Real Geeks, and the list goes on and on and on. And on. Uh, the only thing I would say about that there's a definite, there's a definite. Um, you can divide those in my mind between the broker or power or power team platforms and the single or couple power team platforms. You can divide, but they all do the same thing. You're correct. Um, and 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 Jonathan is correct because whether you have a team or you're an agent, the the list of these products is definitely going to be divided down. But that still doesn't change the basic definition of what these products do. Okay, they just do it better for a team or an individual, depending on which product. And I will break it down since John has been kind enough to point out the divisions. But you have, so for an agent, Easy Agent Pro, Real Geeks, uh, these are... MailRight. MailRight, uh, Yolopo. These are all guys that, that offer websites that you don't own. All right? And you direct market it to those websites if you want to return. If you want to generate leads off your web presence, you would then use direct marketing. And all of these sites have different capabilities because remember I told you at the beginning of the show, people are getting lost about what's included as part of these packages. And really, it's people are using words like, Oh, we have a CRM, which is horrible language because a CRM is a customer record management. It just takes Jonathan's name and email and allows me to do cool things like email him or keep track of him or put him in a task calendar. That's what traditionally CRMs did. Today, what people are calling CRMs are really pipeline uh, relationship management tools. And what, I, what it was that, that's people that's getting emailed. And, and, and you, you create a single thing called a funnel, which is a brand new concept that's just been in the marketplace for like the last five or six years. And a funnel is where you get a text, a, a, an email, a reminder to yourself in your calendar to call a lead. All of that is done automatically by your follow-up system. All these things can be set up by you, the end user. And that is called, people are calling that a CRM. It's not a CRM. It's something different. Well, depending on which one of these direct marketing companies that you subscribe to, they have this follow-up ability. Everybody's got different things that they do in this category. And some of those things, like John mentioned a few minutes ago, like Boomtown, um, is better for teams. You can have an entire team log in. You can have, you've got a dashboard, whereas the owner, you can see all of your team's activity in one place and again, with Boomtown, you get a birth to death uh, view of what's happening with the yeah. lead. Like, like, um, like, you know, I've had the um, marketing director, I should have him back, really. It was a, lot, it was a while ago. Well, follow up, boss, a fantastic CRM. I would not, you know, I would not suggest that for somebody starting out or for only if you're somebody that's handing out multiple leads to multiple agents you know your kind of principal agent or a broker we're going to go for our break folks and when we come back we'll probably confuse you some more but we're trying to clear get some terms straighten some things out for you I i'm making it difficult for robert but that is my job really folks and we'll be back in a few seconds folks and you do it so well we're coming back Robert's bitching at me, uh, um, but there we go. I, 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 I do attempt to try and clarify, but I, every time I seem to make it even more confusing, don't I? But I'm not doing it intentionally, Robert. Uh, um, back to the conversation, Robert. This is a challenge that I've had. I mean, technical resources and sales resources, they need to be different. And there needs to be somebody in between the two that, that explains the services because because a lot, there's a lot of background when you start using, like every time we use language that is properly and detailed descriptive, such as domain, people don't understand it. They glaze over, don't they? Right, because 
And then we start talking about domains and, and that gets super confusing, super fast for a layperson who's still struggling to understand the concept of what a website is. Well, let's get down to the nitty gritty, right? Somebody hires you, hires Robert Newman and your company to build a, build a website, right? Right. 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 So you, you can't build. So what do you do? Do you, do you, you, you've got a number of themes and you can customize those themes and you set up the website. So after a certain level of payment to you and your team, do the people own, own their own website? Yeah. Right. And then after that initial payment, that agreed payment, when they get their website, they can hire you and your team to do various other things for them, but that's on a retainer basis. Is that correct? Correct. But if they stop stop paying you on the retainer, they still got their website and they still got their domain. Right. Where if we we're talking about mail right, is if you stop paying, we we stop doing our services, but you still have a website which we'll move somewhere else for you, right? Which is not quite the same as you, but getting there. If you go to Real Geeks, if you go to Agent Pro, Easy Agent Pro, and there's a couple of others as well, if you stop paying for your website or any of the services, everything's gone. Is that correct? Yes. So if you stop paying, folks, for about three or four of these services, poof, everything's gone. Website, CRM, lead generation, the lot. It will disappear in whatever period of time they give you to start paying again. Poof, it's all gone. And right. I think what you're suggesting is a lot of clients that are ringing you up, possible clients or seeking advice from you, they just don't understand that. I think that that's true. I think, there's, I think that the, the lack of comprehension is even bigger because the reason... The reason I wanted to talk about this is, and we haven't, we've been building steam and going in a direction. And here's where the steam is. 99% of everybody that you can call guys is going to tell you always that direct marketing is the only way to go. You got to pay to advertise to get traffic back to the platform. And the inbound marketing is too hard. And that I disagree with that entirely. But one of the reasons they tell you that is what John just covered actually is that they know that it is a shitty sales proposition to tell you a prospective client, oh, if you ever turn this website off, everything that you ever put on it is gone unless you somehow copy and paste it. Like, and imagine you've been producing blog posts for a year as an example, that would be a pain in the ass. Some providers will let you transfer a WordPress install to a WordPress install but the answer to that is most of them don't all of them say they don't. And you actively, um, uh, you have to, uh, uh, get them to make an exception for you. Uh, I multitask, Robert. You're not, you're, you're not a woman. You're like me, a guy. We can't multitask, Robert. You need to concentrate. I know I can. I, I've got, I got partners telling me they're about ready to walk through the door, though, which is good because now I get to tell everybody, like, oh, hey, there's going to be a loud noise. You know, it's like they, you know, so I have to little pay a little attention to the yep, message right. and, and then tell them, you know, put on some clothes, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So anyway, um, or else they're going to be on film and then, you know, we're going to have 10,000 people ask us what the hell. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so, uh, but inbound marketing is the concept of where you provide really valuable information and the quality of your answer attracts the attention of your audience and also keeps them coming back over and over again to the website. That's inbound marketing. And it's, it's get, getting huge write-ups because every single professional marketer that I know that is worth their salt is saying that at least a percentage of your marketing campaigns, if not all of them, should be based on inbound. It's very unusual that the entire... Um, hold on, I got to tell... Right, I'll, be, I'll take over. So uh, what I think Robert is basically saying, folks, is that... Um, what were we talking about inbound? I think we really got to 
we've got to clarify for you listeners and viewers what inbound means because we both know inbounds me is basically you've got to provide content that's relevant to the audience that you're trying to market to it's that simple and basically if it's set up in the correct technical way google should index it when somebody does a search through google um and it's like you know there are other search engines but google totally dominates the area especially when it's around a local search term there's a good chance if it's optimized and it has some real value to your target audience i you spent a little bit of time putting yourself in the shoes of the target audience it will show up and it will show up above regional and national websites because it's locally targeted that's what it's that's what we're talking about but that means some commitment that means some commitment to either you write it you develop it or you get somebody like robert and his team to develop it so i've there's either you're going to put in sweat equity i your time or you're going to put actual cash to somebody for them to do it for you but that kind of content will attract clients to your website and then depending on how well how it looks how well it converts you can hopefully turn that traffic at some stage into a paying client would you agree with my my summary there robert i would i would i would agree with your summary no um it's the concept is easy but like most things to do with this folks um, the actual practice of doing it is a bit more complicated, isn't it, Robert? Yes, it is. Um, it is. It is very complicated. So, um, uh, but what you're saying, I think, is that what you're a little bit upset and based on your most recent conversations with a number of possible clients is that a lot of platforms i wouldn't quite say you feel that they're misleading and in some ways totally understandable because they're there to sell a platform to a client is that they don't really in some ways they can't can they they're not explaining that soon as you because of the way their platforms are structured is that a they discourage you from doing any kind of inbound marketing because basically they want you to be hooked on their system and right. their basically now you could say the same thing about mailwright my only defense i would say is that wasn't the reason why i did it the reason why the mailwright system has been set up the way it will mailwright version 2.0 has been is that most agents won't commit themselves and don't have the financial resources to actually build content or get somebody who knows what they're doing to build content to get inbound traffic. So we offer the, the ability to get traffic by using Facebook. But on the other hand, I do try and encourage people to build out their mail right sites with individual content and that's why i give that guarantee that if they do want to leave the mail right system we will for free transfer their website to another hosting provider because i want i want i actually believe in what you're saying the only reason why i built the mail right system is a lot of agents will not commit themselves or financially can't commit themselves to uh, effective inbound strategy, Robert. Oh, I agree, and and that there's a lot of pros and cons when we start talking about about like inbound versus direct marketing. And one of them is inbound takes a long period of time. Two, it's more complicated if you want to get into the ins and outs of it. It's like if you want to know what the details of the service is, and you should. I, I I would say you should understand. I wouldn't say you should become an expert if you're going to pay a service company to do it for you, but you need to understand the service well enough to look at the product that you're being delivered by that service company and say, are you doing a good or bad job? 
Like you, like you need to understand because inbound marketing, unlike direct marketing, takes a while. Once it gains steam, the effectiveness of it increases a great deal over, over um, uh, direct marketing. Spend 12 grand, you're probably going to get, you know, 120 leads and, and that's what you're going to get. Or let's just call them 1,200 leads even. Well, I think, and also just to finish off, folks, is the truth is that's why I asked you to come on the show is that I think we're in very two different, very two different sectors. And, and that's why we can effectively work together um, is that what you're offering is inbound marketing, superb customized website solution, Savile Road. You know, if you know what Savile Road is, listeners and viewers, that's where you buy a bespoke suit that, you know, you don't buy it off the peg. It's all measured. Um, some a experienced tailor makes a custom suit for your body size. That's what Robert offers and his team, a bespoke solution. I'm in Mel Wright. We're, we're, in, we're in the kind of um, off the peg, not the cheapest, but the medium range. We're, we're not Amani here with Mel Wright. We're offering basic functionality at good value. That's what our solution. So we're at a totally, we're aiming at a very different target market, really. I think we've had a fascinating conversation, Robert. I think. I think we got back. Hopefully we haven't confused people a bit more. We're going to have to think on some terms, a list of terms and see what feedback we got from this episode. Um, hopefully I didn't confuse the waters too much. Uh, um, and we'll be back next week with a guest. I think it's a couple actually. We've got a power couple, Robert. Uh, um, so okay. we'll be back next week. with hopefully not giving you really confusing information that will make you a more successful real estate agent and provide the lifestyle for you and your family that you wish. We'll be back next week, folks. Bye. Bye.